This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 402, Your Budget is Like a Leaking Ship, by Jacob Lund Fisker of earlyretirementextreme.com. And I am your host and narrator here on the show. My name is Dan, and I'm here each Monday through Friday reading to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. And maybe you've got some ideas for us, some topics you'd like to uh, hear me cover on the show. You can share those over at oldpodcast.com. And today's post uh, comes from Early Retirement Extreme, as I just mentioned. But before we get to that, I want to ask you if you've subscribed to our other four podcasts in our Optimal family. We narrate blogs uh, covering pretty much everything. Just search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this show to find them. But for now, let's hear today's post as we optimize your life. Your Budget is Like a Leaking Ship by Jacob Lund Fisker of EarlyRetirementExtreme.com. As far as I understand, wooden ships are never completely watertight, especially older ships develop leaks and water gets in between the cracks when the boat is straining and working as it moves through the water. This water ends up at the bottom of the ship, under the floorboards of the lower deck, or the only deck, in a place called the bilge. To compensate for this and keep the ship from sinking, or at least the deck from overflowing, bilge pumps must be run on a regular basis to pump this water out. As long as the bilge pump is not overwhelmed, i.e. having to run all the time, the ship will not sink. The average U.S. family, also known charmingly as a consumer unit, spends $49,638 each year. DW and I, since we don't have 0.5 children, we are slightly smaller than a unit, spend about a quarter of this amount. So I've never been able to fully appreciate what made up the difference. If we subsisted on a diet of ramen noodles and junk food, if our clothes were falling apart and our teeth were falling out, the difference would be obvious. However, if it weren't for the RV, which costs more to live in here than it would cost to live in a house in many other places of the country, the difference would be subtle indeed, and you would not be able to tell the difference. To understand the average $49,638 budget, a ship makes an excellent example. There are almost no holes in our ship. Consequently, I don't have to spend a lot of time working the pumps. Conversely, the average consumer unit ship seems to be full of cracks, and thus they need to be very productive at the pumps to keep themselves afloat. This is also known as struggling when things go badly, and having a career when things go well. It is interesting to look at the cracks. For instance, $1,797 are spent on household furnishings each year. Wow! So it actually must be true that consumer units do replace their old furniture each year so that the family won't have to sit in last year's furniture when visiting for Thanksgiving. I heard this on a radio spot. Seriously, I'm not making this up. For apparel and services, $1,881 is spent. That will buy you a lifetime of jackets, about six at $300 each, the price point or quality level where you can expect 10 years of good use out of them. Do that for shoes the next year, and pants the third, etc., and you should be set for a lifetime. Otherwise, $1,800 times 80 years of life comes to more than $150,000 just on clothes. Isn't this just slightly insane? If I may fill you in on my pants situation, for the last two years, I've been wearing two pairs of 501s in the winter on rotation. Total cost, about $70. In the summer, I wear a pair of Docker shorts, costing $20. When sailing, I wear a pair of high-tech pants, cost $150, almost 10 years ago. I get underwear on sale, usually $5 for a $15 pair. At least I can finally see that eating out is really a national pastime. It has its very own budget category. $2,688 a year, or a lifetime cost of more than $200,000 simply to have other people prepare your food. If the average income is, let's say, $40,000 after taxes, would you really want to work five years of your life just so you can eat a meal you didn't make yourself a couple times a week for the rest of your life? I don't know about you, but I can cook and eat a meal much faster than I can get to a restaurant, wait for the waiter, wait for the cook, eat, wait to pay, and then get home again. Transportation is also up there, almost the equivalent of having run the ship aground. At $8,758 per year, or a lifetime cost of nearly half a million, the cost of not living in the right place next to where one actually wants to be is very high. The biggest problem is probably the sheer size of the ship. In general, the bigger they are, the more work they require. Size puts a natural limit on maintenance, insurance, cost, as well as the amount of junk one can stuff in there. The average consumer unit spends $16,920 on housing each year. And so now I am really and perhaps finally beginning to understand why retirement goals of 1 million or 2 million are so common to replace $40,000 or $80,000 in income respectively. 
it is simply needed to compensate for the money that's leaking everywhere. Housekeeping supplies at $639? I bet that includes the famous $800 toilet seat. The reason the difference has escaped me is that when I have visited other people's homes, I've never really been able to spot why they were seemingly spending four times as much as we are. But it must be the leaks in the wallet, so to speak. The closets must be full and purged regularly. I must have not noticed how large pieces of furniture were replaced every year, how they spent several hours each week just driving around in multiple cars, that the reason that it was so warm, 80 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter, or so cold, 65 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer, was that the HVAC was running at full blast, making it necessary to bring a sweater in the summer and shorts in the winter. Every activity must be bleeding money. Perhaps this explains the common misconception that spending less means not really living, or living deprived, or having a lower standard. Most of the waste is, however, on leaks and quantity, not quality. From a quality perspective, not caring about leaks and simply running the pumps is not living well. How can anyone enjoy the journey when having to deal with the problem of running the bilge pump all the time? Why not take care of the leaks? You just listened to the post titled, Your Budget is Like a Leaking Ship by Jacob Lund Fisker of earlyretirementextreme.com. And as usual with these blogs, some of the personal info has changed, but the principles definitely remain the same. This post was uh, put up seven and a half years ago. You can always visit the blog to see what the authors are up to now. And while you're out there looking at new content, check out our other podcasts. We have four other shows where we narrate blogs for you, and those cover many different topics. So to find them, just search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're listening to this show, and be sure to subscribe. And that's it for today's episode. I will, of course, be back tomorrow with a post from Money Mini Blog all about emotions and purchases. So stay tuned for that in the Wednesday show, where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.